The average person eats 50,000 pieces of plastic per year. It's also in tap water and even in the air. And there are more dangerous hidden pollutants. We'll show how to avoid them and why what we eat and breathe rests on a battle for the world's biggest pot of money. And, Mr. Johnson, if you're watching, we have a message for you. If you want to eat less plastic and clothing, you could cut down on mussels. In samples from eight locations, 100% contained plastic, cotton or rail. But most seafood is now contaminated. Only 9% of plastic is recycled, and every day the equivalent of 1,400 garbage trucks of plastic enters the ocean. If this continues, by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish. Animals starve with stomachs full of plastic, while a lucky few are freed from tangles. The average person drinks around 4,000 plastic particles per year from tap water, and bottled water contains 20 times more. 259 bottles were analyzed from 11 different brands across nine countries. Of those 259 bottles, only 17 did not contain tiny plastic particles. Concentrations were as high as 10,000 plastic pieces per liter of water. Researchers say it's also likely to be in many foods. A recent study from Nature found microplastics inside the grains of 16 different salt brands taken from eight different countries, which held plastic fibers and beads as small as 160 microns. We don't yet know how this will affect us, but in fish, plastic crosses into the brain and is linked with behavioral disorders. They eat more slowly and explore less. But don't rush to swap fish for meat. Ham, sausages, and bacon are group one carcinogens, alongside cigarettes, not because of the level of risk, but because of the strength of evidence that they cause cancer. Red meat also has strong links to the world's two largest killers. A major study followed a million years of human life. It found that half a serving per day of red meat increased mortality risk by 9%. For processed meat, it was 13%. And there's a new, far greater risk from red meat, which is at the center of a fight over the most dangerous hidden pollutants. It's not that livestock uses around half the world's land, causing deforestation and mass extinction. And it's not that it drives a vast amount of carbon emissions. Red meat has become a pawn in the fight to make polluters pay, a proxy war over the world's biggest pot of money which will shape this century. A new study has found that air pollution is far more deadly than previously thought, particularly in the US, Europe and Southeast Asia. The largest previous study estimated that outdoor particulate matter caused four million deaths per year. But a more detailed study has uncovered staggering numbers. Previous research relied on satellite and surface observations to estimate average global concentrations of particles, making it difficult to distinguish emissions from dust and wildfire smoke. For a clearer view, researchers used a model of atmospheric chemistry and divided the world into a grid to show pollution levels in specific areas. Matching this with population levels created a much more accurate picture of what we're breathing. To model fossil fuel pollution, they added emissions from sectors like power generation, industry, ships, aircraft, cars, and chemistry analysis from NASA. And finally, they applied the latest data on health impacts. The study calculated that fossil fuel pollution alone causes 8.7 million deaths per year. That's 18% of all deaths globally and over three times the total deaths from the coronavirus pandemic. The fine particles laden with toxins get into the bloodstream, causing more deaths via heart disease and strokes than by respiratory diseases. 
So what does this have to do with red meat? We recently showed the broad support for making polluters pay through carbon taxes. A group of more than 3,000 uh, economists have pleaded for the introduction of carbon pricing people from all kinds of parties in the US. Returning the revenue to the public can avoid it becoming a political issue. And a major study suggests that taxing pollution would cut deaths from fossil fuels in half, saving far more lives that have been lost to coronavirus. Following the video and public pressure, the UK government is looking at pricing carbon emissions across all sectors of the economy. And the UK will lead the UN Climate Summit this year, so it could set an example for the world. But opponents threw red meat to the media. Tax rate on your lifestyle was the headline in a paper owned by a billionaire named in the Paradise Papers. It was a battle of polluters versus scientists, economists and a huge coalition of doctors, including 10 Royal Colleges of Medicine, the BMJ and the Lancet. But the meat trick seemed to work, with the government quickly giving the tabloids what they wanted. We will not be imposing a meat tax on the great British banger. But it's not over. They said meat tax, not carbon tax. There is far more at stake than air pollution. Around the world, carbon tax decisions will direct a vast hidden bet. Johnson said, we all breathe the same air and we all suffer when carbon emissions rise and the planet warms. But the approval of the first new coal mine in 30 years is the tip of the iceberg. Waste incinerators promised to be a clean source of energy and were excluded from pollution taxes, but they emit as much CO2 as coal plants. Tax-free pollution is profitable. 48 incinerators release as much CO2 as Manchester and Birmingham combined. Many more are under construction and dozens are seeking planning permission. And areas with more incinerators recycle less plastic. While plastic stored in landfill or recycled retains its greenhouse gases for a long time, burning it releases them immediately. 99% of plastic is made from fossil fuels, and incinerators have a license to burn them freely. Two-thirds of UK emissions aren't taxed, giving the advantage to the most polluting businesses. And generous pollution permits can be sold, boosting the profits of polluters. In 2016, a steel firm reportedly made an extra £700 million this way. And in 2018, over 40% of UK pollution permits were issued for free. An investigation by Unearthed and the BBC discovered that the government also supports overseas fossil fuel projects with emissions equivalent to 17 coal plants. This is what your taxpayer pounds are helping to finance. Gas and oil production in Brazil, nearly £2 billion worth of financing since 2010. The UK government estimates the total emissions from that project are 17 million tonnes of CO2 each year. And over four years, 96% of its UK EF energy investments went to fossil fuel projects. Following the investigation, the government committed to ending its support for fossil fuels overseas, a win for public pressure and another positive sign that the government is listening. The UN says climate change will kill as many people as coronavirus every year by 2050. And it says the biggest solution is a pot of $170 trillion. You can see some of this money at work at Tesla. Its shares rose 700% in 2020, and it's now worth more than several other car giants combined. But Tesla didn't make money from selling cars. Other car makers paid it $1.5 billion to make up for creating too much pollution. And there's another powerful hidden force at play. Uh, she said, do you want a carrier bag? I said, of course I do with all this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> she said, five pence. I said, you what? She said, five pence for a carrier bag. I said, I come here all Good. the time for the pilots. I'm, no, I'm right behind this, right behind this. Mm. Why? Charging for carrier bags, yeah, absolutely. Lazy bastards. 
When a 5p tax was added to plastic bags in England, something strange happened. Sales dropped by 86%, saving 13 billion plastic bags. It wasn't just the price. Wealthy people cut down as much as everyone else. It reminded us of the true cost of plastic. It made us think. How's my five pence going to help the environment? Typical. That is the attitude. That sums it up, yeah. doesn't it? Sums well, it, it up. What's going to something else, doesn't it? You're it's just the making turtles. You think. It's the turtles. Right, yeah. Yeah, turtles. That's why they get caught up in them, yeah. Terrible. Yeah. She said, she they said... Think, they think they're the a jellyfish, jellyfish and they yeah. go, oh, 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 they swallow it. Yeah, yeah. And choke. So I said, right, so it's all right. I can, I can kill a turtle, can I, for five pence? You're not that bothered, then? We won't all head out to rescue animals, but given a greener option, we'll take it. And given a fair playing field, investors also go green. Taxing pollution helped deliver cleaner cars, which are also faster and safer with larger crumple zones to absorb impacts. The world is heading for some major impacts. The most dangerous and most likely are all intensified by climate change. Infectious diseases, including 300 coronaviruses, will be more likely to spread to humans. Hurricanes, floods and fires will intensify. And entire countries will turn to desert, driving mass migration, starvation and conflicts over resources. But experts agree there is a solution. Mr Johnson... If you have the courage to make polluters pay, it will save many times more people than have died during the pandemic. Support for the plastic bag tax rose after it was implemented, and it was the same with other measures, like the indoor smoking ban. It just requires leaders to lead. When polluters lose their advantage, investment flows to innovative green projects which consistently bring more jobs and growth. Please put a proper evidence-based price on pollution. And to our viewers, what's your message to your leaders? Let us know in the comments and please sign the petition to make polluters pay. Right, so it's all right. I can, I can kill a turtle can I, for five pence. You're not that bothered then. Why do you want to kill what? a turtle at all? Because if carrier bags shouldn't be out there, yeah. ban them. But don't say, you're killing turtles with free carrier bags. If you want to kill a turtle, five pence. Oh, there you go, there's five pence. I don't kill a turtle. <laughs> That's what's annoying me. And if you're wondering what to watch next... This house was 3D printed in a week, partly from waste. The fourth industrial revolution could bring some major upgrades to your future home and perhaps your body. You can watch now, the links in the description.